Michael Popak, Legal AF. Donald Trump and his lawyers aren't going to get any common courtesies or professional courtesies in the criminal trial. Not when they act out, act out of bounds, commit professional misconduct, breach ethics. They're not going to get the common courtesy that comes in trying a case in the Manhattan Supreme Court. What am I talking about? It's just been reported based on uh, some uh, uh, colloquy and dialogue in the courtroom today in the Manhattan criminal prosecution of Donald Trump for uh, election interference and business record fraud that normally, and I've been doing you know criminal defense law for a long time and tried cases in state and federal court on that, on that, uh, and that type. Normally, when you're on the defense side, the prosecution tells you in advance who the witnesses for the next day are going to be so that you can get ready and prepare. Um, you know, although I've been in federal court where they tell you that like in the morning and then the witness pops up in the afternoon. In state court, it's always been sort of common courtesy that you let the other side know, the defense know, like tomorrow is going to be Michael Cohen, Stormy Daniels, and maybe if we can do it, a Hope Hicks. But because Donald Trump is continuing to violate the gag order and breaches the gag order and attacks and tries to intimidate witnesses, the argument goes as follows. He's forfeited his right to know in advance uh, uh, and prepare for his trial because he doesn't use it for trial preparation. He uses it to try to improperly influence jurors and witness tamper and try to undermine their credibility in front of the jury who's of course not sequestered they go home every night they're told not to read and watch social media but you know most of these people live with families and they live in new york and you know things are going to seep in to their brain just through osmosis or otherwise so the judge angora uh, sorry judge mershon in hearing the argument today and judge and uh, with the um, prosecutor's position was we don't want to tell them who's going to be the first witnesses on Monday or Tuesday or ever. We don't want to give them any advance notice. They have our witness list. They know who we could potentially call. They'll just have to prepare and pull the file behind them, the witness file for the person that we call at the moment. We don't want to give them advance notice. Now, I've been on the defense side, mainly most of my career. I've never been on the prosecution side, except as a special prosecutor in a couple of matters uh, where they brought me in. But on the defense side, you know, you can see the courtesy because you work all night. You're like, okay, we can focus on Cohen. Cohen's tomorrow. I'm talking like I'm a Trump lawyer, which I never would be. And you get, you know, give me the... Give me the witness file that you've had prepared in advance with all of the all of the Cohen documents and all of the Cohen exhibits that are going to pro- possibly be used. The Cohen audio tape that Cohen took of Donald Trump while he was trying to orchestrate the conspiracy to bribe Stormy Daniels and record it uh, fraudulently on his books and records and interfere with the 2016 election. You know, the heart of the case. The, uh, the you know, uh, the Cohen file for cross-examination and impeachment. You know, whatever you got, it's like this big file. And of course, by now, because you're going to trial next week, you should already have, if you're a, 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 a good trial lawyer worth your salt, you should have an outline for how you're going to cross-examine um, uh, Michael Cohen. I don't know if Susan Necklace is going to do it for Donald Trump or Todd Blanche or one of their associates, but somebody's going to do it. They need to be ready. And you work, you know, oh, it's tomorrow. It's, you know, you, you find out Monday night, Tuesday morning, it's going to be Cohen. Um, and maybe if we get past Cohen, it'll be, and then they say it's going to be Hope Hicks, former press secretary for Donald Trump, or it's going to be uh, David Pecker, the National Enquirer, uh, editor-in-chief who helped develop the, with, with Donald Trump the Catch and Kill program to try to, you know, catch these terrible stories of Donald Trump's sexual misconduct while he was married and hide it from the American public through a non-disclosure agreement and a payoff and then record it as a Michael Cohen or some other type of legal expense so nobody would know about it, you know, and then don't report it as a campaign contribution to violate federal election law. You know that. They're not getting that. The judge said today, Judge Rajan said, I'm not ordering that. It's a courtesy. It's not required. It's nowhere in the statutes or in the criminal procedure law, the CPL for New York. And I'm not going to require it. You know, this is what happens. This is the byproduct of Donald Trump disrespecting, attacking, doxing, violating the judge. 
I've said this in other hot takes. This is the same judge that's going to ultimately sentence him if this jury returns a verdict on any of the 34 counts of felony counts against Donald Trump. He's going to be sentencing him. It's him that's going to decide, Judge Bershon, whether he's going to be sentenced to probation, a year, five years, or 20 years in prison, up to 20 years in prison for what's been charged. Your dog, like my Lily, is a member of the family, so serve them the top quality food they deserve. Serve them gnome gnome. All dogs are individuals and they deserve to be served like it. Gnome Gnome delivers freshly made dog food personalized to your dog's preferences and unique caloric needs. Gnome Gnome is made with 100% premium ingredients. That means 0% freaky fillers or funky stuff. Dogs love great tasting meals just like us, yet their nutritional needs are different than ours. That's why Gnome Gnome's nutrient packed recipes are developed by board certified veterinary nutritionists. Freshly made, and ship free to your door. Gnome Gnome has already delivered over 40 million meals. That's because the best dogs, yours, deserve the best food, theirs. As listeners know, my dog Lily is truly part of our family, and I don't know what I'd do without her. That's why I'm committed to only giving her the best. Board certified vet nutritionists develop each of Gnome Gnome's recipes to provide dogs with the proper balance of vital nutrients required to thrive. Oh yeah, and they're floor licking delicious too. Gnome face assured or your money back guaranteed. Meaning if your dog isn't deliriously excited about dinner, then it's a money back guarantee. Say bye to your boring dog food. Your dog deserves a reason to run to their bowl for every single meal, every single day. Go right now for 50% off your no-risk two-week trial at trynome.com slash legalaf. Spell trynome.com slash legalaf for 50% off. Trynome.com slash legalaf. He's also the one that makes decisions like, are you going to find out who your witnesses are in advance? And he has said, hmm, now I'm just doing uh, inner dialogue here. I don't actually know what Judge Rashawn is thinking, but I'm a person of a certain age that's similar to Judge Rashawn. I've been doing this as long as he has. And this is what I think I would be thinking. Well, they've been mercilessly crucifying my daughter uh, without any justification, attacking her and, ch and, and altered and made her life hell. Uh, to try to get me removed. They've tried unsuccessfully to remove me and challenge and attack my professional standards and ethics in this courtroom without any merit. I'm, I've already invited motions for sanctions related to the meritless bad faith filings that have happened in front of me. I've already said I'm gonna hold a evidentiary hearing about whether Donald Trump should be gagged for violating my order, um, including whether he should be fined up to $5,000 a day, found in criminal contempt, and maybe put in jail. And this is the same group that's asking me for the courtesy, not the mandatory obligation of having notice in advance of who their witnesses are gonna be, the same people who go on social media and use that information to violate my gag order, I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut the circuit. I am not going to allow that to happen. I'm going to close that loop. That would be my inner dialogue. And the answer is no. And the judge is on solid grounds. It's not like this is a due process violation or a constitute, you don't have a constitutional right to know in advance who the witnesses are going to be against you the day before they testify. You have a right to know, and it's mandatory, that the, that the prosecution give you all the exculpatory evidence, something that would tend to prove your innocence, or inculpatory evidence that would tend to prove your guilt, and tell you who the witnesses are going to be potentially in a long list, you know, needle in a haystack type thing, and give you all the documents and data dump. Sure, that is their obligation as the prosecution. And it can be prosecutorial misconduct and grounds to dismiss your indictment and reverse your conviction if they don't do that. But nowhere in the Constitution that the founding fathers of New York or our United States say that there's a constitutional right to, they didn't get into the logistics of how the trial is actually handled. And that there's no constitutional requirement, nor is there case law that requires uh, and finds that there's a constitutional violation or a due process violation or anything despite what Donald Trump is invariably going to say about this ruling. Now, now they don't want me to know who the witnesses are gonna be. This is a kangaroo court. This is a blind box. This is a star chamber. I'll do it for him. Stephen Chung, 
uh, spokesperson for Donald Trump. It's not. What he's going to leave out of his social media posts, and I'm sure Ben will do them tomorrow morning, what he's going to leave out of his social media posts is he knows who the witnesses are. He just doesn't know what order they're going to be called. He has all the documents. He just doesn't know the order they're going to be used. I mean, that's a good comparison. He has all the docs. The the, uh, prosecution doesn't have a duty to tell him in what order they're going to present their case. That's up to them. They present their case. The defense presents their case. You know, there's no, like, sequence. Like, oh, they're doing it out of order, Judge. We numbered all of these exhibits, one to a million, and they did they did them out of order. That's not a thing. That's not an objection. Nor is this common courtesy that's not going to be extended to Donald Trump for obvious reasons. Nor do his lawyers. And shame on, and I've said it before, and shame on uh, Todd Blanche. Todd Blanche knows better. He's practiced law as well as long as I have. He's been a federal prosecutor, well-respected, and then he's sort of lost it all. Could have lost it. You know, now he stands there next to Donald Trump while Donald Trump rails at the media, the press, the jurors, the New York court system, and everything else behind a bike rack at a press conference. He looks like, you know, Donald Trump's there, and Todd Blanche looks like he's undergoing root canal without Novocaine uh, next to him. And way in the back, not even like close, is Susan Necklace, his other lawyer, because she doesn't want to be anywhere near it. She's behind the bike rack in the back, almost trying to leave the room because they know and there should be no surprise and even Susan Necklace who has a good reputation she wasn't able to get the men at DA to kind of bend over backwards for them not given where we are and what they've done so we'll continue to follow the rulings by the judge like this one that you know sort of uh, you got you get what you pay for you know you make your bed now you know lie in it Donald Trump and this is the bed that you've made we'll follow it on legal AF right here on the Midas Touch Network every Wednesday and Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern time and then on hot takes like this one at the intersection of law and politics if you like what I'm doing I'm Michael Popa give me a thumbs up leave a comment go over to playlists and contributors on the YouTube channel for Midas Touch and find Michael Popa you'll find my entire body of work there here And uh, so until my next hot take, until my next legal AF, this is Michael Popak.